It's Monday, the 6th of March. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. Give you an update on the snow and power out situation here in Northern California. Folks that don't live here don't quite understand how this power can go out for so long. We're going on a week now without power. And the issue is with all this snow coming down, all of the sudden, it knocks the trees down and knocks the trees into the wires and it destroys these overhead power lines and power poles. So for example, this is the main road right here. This is the main line coming up the road. This line, hello doggy, this line is powered. They got this line fixed. However, all the circuits coming off of this main line, like this circuit right here that goes to our house, is not fixed yet. So they're doing some work on this circuit down the road towards our house that will maybe get the power back on in a day or two more so that'll be more than one week without power here at the 3200 foot elevation just outside of nevada city california so some questions were being asked about how do you guys deal with this power out situation and as long as you're prepared it's not that big a deal let me show you around a little bit Growing up on the tree farm a couple miles away from here, we lived down a three-quarter mile long dirt road, and so we would get snowed in and stuck for days and weeks at a time. But up here, we've got county pl plowed roads. That main road gets plowed fairly quickly, and these secondary roads, they finally just now got plowed the other last night all the way down. But as long as you have a four-wheel drive car and you're able to get out of your driveway, you can get rolling pretty quick. So right here is one example of uh, Yaya's house where I've been working on keeping the driveway clear so that we could get out. So Jenny and the kids are off to school today. But one of the problems quickly becomes where do you put all the snow and where do you park the cars? Here's one of these little bobcats that have been a big help in getting driveways cleaned out. So these snow banks end up getting quite huge. So the trick is to keep your driveway plowed out from the beginning of the storm. Just get on it early and stay on it. And then the snow plow guys will see that you've made an effort to keep your driveway cleared. Get your vehicles parked right up close to the edge of the driveway near the county plowed road. And then they'll endeavor to not <laughs> pile a giant pile of snow in front of your driveway. But when they do plow get that snow and get it out of here especially before it freezes at night and keep this area clear so i'm out here two or three times a day while it's snowing just to keep this little section clear right here from the truck to the road so i can always get out of here and another thing when you want to get out of here bring your snow shovel with you and bring a chainsaw too because there's going to be trees down on your way into town Minimize the number of trips into town to begin with by being prepared and having what you need ahead of time But bring your chainsaw with you as you drive into town and you may need to chainsaw yourself Back on your way back home as additional trees may fall before you even get back home You're gonna to want to keep your walkway or a walkway cleared The whole time throughout the whole storm there just keep working on keeping this thing dug out You don't want to have to dig, dig all this out at once at the end of the storm. Just keep after it during the storm Keep it open. Back here at HQ, it's the little Honda 2200 generator that I like to run in the morning and then in the evenings and then turn it off at night and have plenty of fuel saved up or on board to keep this thing running. You can run it pretty much all, all you need to during the day for about a gallon of gas per day. You don't leave it running all night, just, just when you need it. And speaking of fuel, I like to use a mixture of 100 octane from the airport. It's easier and quicker for me to get to the airport to get gas with some 100 octane. That fuel stores better than auto fuel. Now regarding the, the generator, what are we using it for? We just run the wires through the window, seal up the window so that the fumes don't get in. Keep it outdoors so that it doesn't get fumey. The typical morning routine is uh, bring the generator in from the house. I'll leave it in the house overnight with the fuel vent closed off. Bring it out here, fire it up, 
number one job, get the coffee pot going. I mean, yeah, we could do a better job of getting coffee off of the gas stove, but I like my fresh ground coffee from the coffee maker. That dang coffee maker takes the most energy of anything that we're running on the generator. Then uh, get that coffee made, get that turned off, and then make a decision whether to run the refrigerator or the uh, the whole house furnace. This, The trick to this here is the fact that we have natural gas. If you've got gas, either propane or natural gas, you don't need much electricity to stay comfortable and warm. With natural gas here at this house, we've got a hot water heater, we've got city water, so we always have water under pressure. We don't need a pump pressure to get water pressure. We've got city gas, natural gas, so we've got gas to heat the water with and gas to cook with on a gas cook stove and gas to heat the house with with a whole house furnace. This generator will easily power the <coughs> whole house furnace. I also have a gas fire insert that stays lit all the time without the fan running which keeps the house at a minimum of 50 degrees. Then in the morning after we're done with the coffee we can fire up the whole house furnace and heat the whole house up because we got the in-laws and everybody staying here because their houses are not set up like this. They have electric uh, cooking or or in the case of the other in-laws the um, damn stove the heater the the gas heater is busted so they got to stay here with us to stay warm so we got a house full of guests plus all the kids working here or staying here regarding the refrigerator it only needs to run a a little bit each day just to keep the freezer foods frozen so they don't thaw out and refreeze. Doesn't take a whole lot of energy and a whole lot of time to run that that um, refrigerator. And the other most important thing is have a lot of power strips because everybody in the house has got a device they want to have charged up. And so you need plenty of power strips to keep all the devices charged. Regarding online capability, of course cable TV all that is shot but what has come through very well during this is the Verizon wireless service has worked throughout this whole emergency here and we're able to get plenty well plenty of limited connectivity through the Verizon service and the use of hotspots so make sure you have the hotspot capability on your Verizon if you want to get a laptop computer or something running using your hotspot off of your cell phone I think this guy got lost in the snow here he's looking for his owner look you up on your tag there so regarding this weather we've had uh, four big storms roll through here uh, about 40 inches of snow here at the 3200 foot elevation now we've got this cut off low just circulating off the coast of uh, Oregon there that just keeps pumping these showers these nuisance showers uh, snow showers into the area so it's not really adding a whole bunch of snow but it's preventing this snow from melting and that's going to go on all the way through Wednesday. Then things get real interesting on Friday. The situation changes and it goes from this cold weather that we've had the last two weeks here to a sudden change to an atmospheric river where things are going to get very warm very quickly. And the rain is going to start pouring into Northern California or, and Central California. And... The rain is going to melt a lot of this snow at the lower elevations. It's not a problem for the snow at the higher elevations. This snow will just act like a sponge and absorb that water and it won't result in a huge runoff. But the runoff at the lower elevations could be substantial. But the problem is going to be you add this, you add this uh, water to these snow loads on these roofs and that's going to start getting very heavy. The, the code around here, these roofs are designed, well, these are older houses, so I'm not sure what design criteria they used at the time, but right now the design criteria is about 60 pounds per square foot. Right now we're looking at about 45 pounds per square foot. So we're okay on the snow loads on these roofs at the moment. But if, if they absorb a whole lot of water from this coming rain, that could be a problem. Meanwhile, our local airport's completely closed. They are getting the runway plowed. It's kind of the last of the priorities. They got to get these roads <coughs> done first before they start messing with that runway. 
but the hangers are all blocked off considerably from the snow. Uh, a lot of the snow is falling off the roof and blocking the hangar doors. I'll post a little video clip showing how I got into the one hangar, but it's going to be quite some time before we're ever going flying again out of Nevada County Airport. So hopefully power back on this circuit uh, tomorrow or the next day and we'll be back in business. But as long as you're prepared and keep these areas clear during the storm, you've got fuel for your generators, you've got some sort of natural gas or propane gas and plenty of it for your house and or to run your generators. As long as you're prepared, these sort of weather conditions should not be that big of a problem for you. But if you're elderly and you can't move this, you can't physically do this kind of work, you gotta reconsider whether this is the kind of area you wanna live. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.